Okay, first of all, merci. Thanks to Boku, to Irene, to all the team. It has been a fantastic event. Incredible, inspiring talks. I had to change several times my presentation. I have to rise the bar. Okay, let's start. Okay, I'm gonna talk about creativity and and I will focus like in three different spaces. The first is uh, I'm gonna try to to make a case that information visualization is infinite. It's, an, it's a vast, infinite space. Everything is to be done, okay? The second uh, part of the talk is we'll try to give you or give us some ideas about how to explore this infinite space, okay? There are only some some interesting ideas, possibilities. Uh, and finally, I'm gonna talk about transformations and and um, I'm gonna play a little bit with transformations, okay? Transformation being one of the most important tools to explore uh, the space of possibilities. Okay. Okay, Infobis as unexplored infinite space. Combinatorics, right? It's something that already was mentioned in some talks. Uh, with few Unicode characters, you can build millions and millions of faces. This is the power of combinatorics, right? In information visualization, uh, the same happens in, with greater complexity. Let's start with, with a very simple question. I have two numbers, and I want to know how many ways how many visualization methods there exist to visualize only these two numbers, okay? This is just some of the ideas I had, but I know there are many more. Yes, starting with notation and then going through conventional uh, methods, uh, three-dimensional pie charts, donuts, etc. Now more sophisticated or strange or metaphorical, etc. methods. And there are many, 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 many geographies. It depends, of course, of the context and on how you interpret these two numbers, what's the meaning of the two numbers, etc. But the data structure is the simplest one. It's only two numbers, right? You can use sounds, frequencies, animation, interaction, etc. And the last method is, is, is a, a very recent one that I love, which is the fat fonts, a fantastic invent, in which the surface of the figures actually are, pro are proportional to the value. Okay? So it's... And that's only to tell that there could be many, many more new ideas to visualize only two figures. Now, this is two numbers. Imagine other data structures, more complex ones, like you know, a list of numbers, but more numbers, uh, dates, geographic uh, information, etc. But so we agree the number of visualization methods per data structure is, is big, okay? It's really big. And there are many, many, many data structures, okay? Also, the combination of data structure is huge because we enter the realm of the combina combinatorics, right? So imagine how many combinations uh, there exist if the, com if the data structures alone are a lot, right? The combination of visualization methods is, all, is also huge. And you can combine data structures and try to visualize that and you can combine also visualization methods, it's two layers of combinations, two spaces of, com of combinations. So add to the, this big equation uh, the possibility of using time and interaction. So this is, this is this vast infinite space I am talking about. And this is the, the, the equation, the result. Wait, no. No, this is the Drake equation. This is for another purpose. This is for calculating alien uh, civilization, but 
I think the result is basically the same. <laughs> so, no problem. Now, continuity. I think the way uh, information visualization has been communicated, it's, it's, it's very re reductionist and discrete, discrete in the sense that a lot of people tend to, to think that there are some data structures and there are like matching information visualization methods. But the truth is that in the space of visualization methods, <clears throat> you can find uh, continuities and transformation between one and the other. Right? Let me show you a very small map I am working on that put in relation diff several methods, visualization methods, by means of simple transformations. For instance, a bar can be like replicated, but also can be uh, bended and thus create this, this is what I call a parliament this method. And then you can continue bending it and you have the donut. <coughs> Then you just remove the, the hole in the center, you have the pie chart, etc. And in, si in similar ways, like connecting areas, etc., you can go and, 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 and go from one method to another. And actually, every possible visualization method uh, will be connected to this huge component. Okay? And for instance, here I go to the conventional curves graph, uh, then I arrive to this scatter. If I connect points in the scatter, I have a network. If I remove relations, I have a tag cloud. We have seen many of these things already happening here, these kind of transformations. But I know we can connect everything, okay? And it's huge. And we can also ask ab about the intermediate points. So this is one perspective that could help to, to navigate, okay? Okay. So, some ideas uh, to, to explore, create, to, to come, come out with new ideas, with new visualization methods. Mm. I have this, this method called the, the Knights Movement. Uh, the Knights in the, in the, in the Czech uh, board moves like horizontally and vertically, right? And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. I'm, I'm going to start with one project. Yes, this is the, the, the recent, recently published uh, drones project, which is quite interesting. Uh, and now this project has two things. I'm, I'm going to make some reduction here. Like the, the data structure, which is about uh, dates and numbers associated to the dates, with some meaning, and then some visualization strategy here, uh, which is quite a uh, narrative as well. It uses the, the, the it uses the time to convey some kind of uh, emotion and and relation with the visualization, right? Okay, now I'm gonna make. Uh, an horizontal movement, okay? I'm gonna uh, shift to another project that works with different data and almost same visualization. And I know because I, I, I speak with the, the author of this second visualization that, that it wasn't inspired in the, in, the, in the previous one. So it's kind of a very fast side heist that happens all the time in visualization. Yes? Uh, like, like projects that, that come out with similar or almost the same ideas in terms of, of visualization, but it uh, was just coincidental, right? So now a vertical movement, a vertical flip-flop. Uh, same data, different visualization, different visualization method. Okay, so all the meteors, right? But this time map it, yes, and place on a map. Okay, this is a heat map. <clears throat> and of course, you can think on, on the next step. Similar or exactly, basically the same visualization method, different data, okay? Please take up um, like a picture in your head of, this, of these patterns. And this is Tweetmap, also a recent project. It visualizes uh, one million tweets 
filtered by the word meteor. And you can see in the Amazon and the Sahara, there's no people tweeting about meteors. And in the previous map, there's no meteors falling there. So total correlation, meaning it's very dangerous to tweet about meteors, right? <laughs> Okay, same data, different method. The data is the same because it's tweets, the, the way the, the API uh, de delivers the information. But in that, in that case, uh, and this is a project of mine, I am focusing on, on different parts of the data. I am building a network out of the, of the, of the messages. This is real time and what I'm, what I am visualizing right now is conversations about OpenViz conference, okay? People talking about and sending messages one to the others. It's filtered in a way that only people that at least share two messages uh, appear in the, in, the, in the network, okay? And you see that there are forces involved. There's also a hyperbolic space here. And Okay, I think this is interesting. I will, I will tweet it right now so you can have it. Okay, you can have it in your computers. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. Uh, conversations, again, Basically, same visualization, different data. This time it's fiction. It's from, from, from the last series. I took the script and I analyzed some conversations going on. Okay. Um, I can navigate through episodes, open a particularly interesting episode, etc. Now, horizontal jump or flip flop. Same data different visualization. And this is a classic from the graph to the adjacent matrix, which is another view of the, of the same structure exactly, the, the, the network, right? And again, I, I can navigate. And the last step is this adjacent matrix of a network of ingredients uh, in Muesli. This is done by Moritz Stefaner, okay? and etc cetera, etc cetera. so how can you use this this kind of game you can start with with some project you you like and you have a data set you want to work with try to arrive to your data set jumping that way the night's movement this is how this is a way to stimulate uh, your brain regarding the data you have right you can also uh, find a project that basically visualizes the, the same data you have and try to make like a, a tour and arrive to the same point, but with a different visualization idea. Okay. Okay. Now, inspiration. I, I'm gonna throw some ideas to, to, to find inspiration that could help. Some ideas that work well with me. Okay, this is an avocado. I, I, I don't have anything to say about it, but I just felt <laughs> I have to use it, okay? Okay. There are awesome uh, collection of images in, in Pinterest. So at the end of the talk, I will tweet uh, the list, uh, list of references of many things I've, I've shown here. And it contains like five or, th or six awesome Pinterest boards. Uh, this one, for instance, a capture from, from, from database inspiration created by Periscopic. It's, it's interesting because some of these images are not exactly uh, information visualization projects. So, but they, they, they give ideas, of course. They, they stimulate the eye and the brain, okay? So, and, 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 and also, I, I, I will totally create, uh, if I was interested in, in data visualization and create new, new, new methods, I will, I will like curate my own uh, boards with several criteria, right? It's, it's a fantastic exercise. Okay, now this is a project um, aimed to, 
to give inspiration. This is a project of mine. It's a selection, selection of information visualization project. Uh, none of them is, 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 is mine. Uh, and the way I, I built this list uh, is I, I curated first a list of words, words that I reckon as the, as the important things in life. Right? I also asked some people around what are the, th the important things in life. So out of this list of, of words, right, I selected one project per word. And the good thing of this project is that if you click on a project, it, it gets marked. And, and you can close the, like the browser window or return later, and it, will con it, it memorizes the project you already open. So you can spend one week or one month navigating the entire collection. So, and every project here, some, some of them are very well known, others are not so well known. Each project here is fantastic. So I will tweet that also later, okay? And it is part of the list of references, of course. Now books, <clears throat> I have this rule that for each information visualization book, I have to, to read nine books about other stuff, <laughs> right? Because for me, the, the most interesting thing about information visualization is that it's a window to the universe. So for me, actually, it's more important what I see through that window than the window itself, OK? And actually, I'm, I am not really very interested in information visualization. But I, I am passionate about how I can use it to touch other realities. So it's extremely important to balance. And the same way you, you, you care about what you, what you eat, and, and not only in, 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 the, in, the, in an individual way, but also balancing, I, I am very uh, concerned about balancing my reading. So, each book has like a interval, a range that goes from the center is the, is the, the books that touch the center are books very related with information visualization. And then if I go outside, there are books that kind of try to touch the center but go far outside, etc. And for instance, this one is the the structure of, of scientific revolutions. It's like, it's like I call a platform book, because it's, like, it's more metalinguistic, it's, it's paradigmatic. It, it, it helps you actually to understand other books or to see these disciplines from the outside, okay? So this is the distribution, and, 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 and it should be, at least in my case, very well balanced, okay? So some of the books here are also part of the, of the list. Okay. We, we read this sentence today, uh, totally, it's, it's my religion as well, so it is clear. Mm. Transformation. Okay, transformation in the sense of taking one visualization method and transform it to, to make it a, a, a new one. In, in this case, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about a space transformation, which is a specific technique to do that. So for instance, uh, many presenters, many talkers uh, mention this idea or, or feature the, the magnifying glass. And, and they commented that one of the problem is that you lost context, right? So Etcher uh, give us the, like the solution. You, you can see the plant in the balcony, but you continue seeing the, the city, right? So this is kind of a, an idea to, 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 to explore uh, not only an image, but of course any visualization method that contains certain complexity could be, could be take advantage of, of this idea. Let's see. Okay, this is a Venn diagram, seven sets, and I am using it to categorize, to organize like my list of references. So I showed this this project for two reasons. One of the, definitely one of the ways to, to get inspiration and to get fresh new ideas is to be curating things all the time, organizing. I, I like very much a, a concept which is a structured serendipity. 
and I, I transformed it a little, uh, and what I use is methodological serendipity. So to, have, to, to be creating this, this kind of spaces where you organize your information, your ideas, your notes, uh, quotes from books, etc., is by itself an activity that stimulates the brain because you are extending the brain using the same dynamics the brain innerly has, right? And then you have this, like, this bank of knowledge and that you can access. So this is about combinatoric. I, I am using the Zoom technique, right? To explore it. Uh, and there are many other more rational tools here that I can use for filtering, etc. Okay, I have many categories. I have my entire, what I call subclopedia, which is my own encyclopedia of, of Wikipedia articles that somehow define the theoretical basis of my work, etc. Okay? Okay. This is a book. The name in English escapes me right now. In Spanish is Rayuela. In English is Hopscotch. Something like that. Do you know about it? Cortázar, Argentinian writer. Okay. This is an amazing book, a non-linear book. You can read it in two ways, like in, in a linear way, or you can, you can jump uh, following a guide, the other, the other places in each chapter. You can go to the, the different chapters ha have numbers, and you can just jump. And I, I am visualizing that exactly right. That's, this is the, the linear order. And then there is a dynamic going on showing what's the non-linear order, yes, the path, the, the network. And Again, I use like a, like like the 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 cursor as as a surrogate of my eye somehow. So thinking on accessibility, I don't know if this could be transformed in in a useful tool somehow. Okay, it it expands my my eyes, right? Okay, and you can read the first sentence of this is an, an ongoing project not finished yet. This is something that Morris Stefaner said to me. <laughs> but look, this is Darcy, Darcy Thompson's work like more than a century ago. Uh, he, he realized that in nature, different species actually can be a uh, converted one into another by this kind of bidimensional uh, transformations. So this is, this is to tell that, that in nature, the nature uses, of course, combinatoric to, cre to, cre to create, but also a transformation. Because what you have, what you keep in this transformation is the spatial relations. So neighbors continue to be neighbors. So this is part of a wider kind of theory and also way of thinking, which is to topology. And, and I totally invite you to, to, to dig a little bit into topology, because there you will find great ideas that can be used in visualization and information visualization. It is a way to escape a quantitative way of thinking of information visualization. OK? So more images from Darcy Thompson, yeah. Ominids. And we are all related, of course. And here, the, 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 the schools are separated from, the, from this special transformation. So it is interesting to find what are, in mathematical terms, this transformation. And it will be awesome to play a little bit with that. So let's go play, OK? OK, what I have here is it's very simple. It's a grid, right? And I'm going to apply some different transformations. Okay. This is the class where I have the, the transformation. So right now, this is the, the function it uses. Every time he draws a line or it draws a line or it places a point, it just do this transformation very simple, which is it gets a point and returns basically the same point. That's, that's what the, the, the transformation is called, identity. It basically does nothing, right? But if you start modifying here 
touching this, this part of the code, you will transform the grid. Every point will be relocated. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's start with a, a ready-built example. It's hyperbolic because it was mentioned today. Okay, it's a little bit slow. No, this one. <laughs> So this is the hyperbolic transformation. Okay, but there is a parameter here in the hyperbolic transformation that actually measures the like the, the impact of the transformation. Yes. So I can try to modify it. I'm gonna use the mouse position. Right, I'm gonna multiply this by by ten. Let's see what happens. I'm totally experimenting here. Haha, <laughs> nothing happened. <laughs> no worries, I have more functions. So now it works, okay? So this is a, like a dynamic transformation going on. But now I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw something, right? <laughs> yes, it's a cat because yesterday friends told me that without a cat in your presentation, <laughs> no one will ever remember your talk, so. I had to, to place a cat. Okay. That's how I spend my night drawing this cat. <laughs> okay. Now let's let's really try to do something new. Go back to the cat. She's a photo of the Where? She's a photo of the cat. Ah, okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. Now I will try to build the fish eye. So you can see more or less what's What's the idea here? So now I'm working with JavaScript, it using relying in my in my own framework. Uh, but besides the object point, this is pure mathematics what I will use here. I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. So the the first thing about this transformation is that um, it's based on the position of the cursor, right? So in mouse x, this is the, the coordinate of the horizontal coordinate, and mouse, mouse y. And it depends on the distance between the point and the mouse. So more, more, more the close the point is, more heavy will be the transformation, okay? That's the idea of, of this zooming, okay? So f far points won't be really be transformed, only the points very close to the, to the mouse. So first thing I will do is to measure that distance. First, the horizontal distance. Second, the vertical distance. And do you recognize what I'm writing right now? This particular line? Yes, Pythagoras, right? This is the distance, okay? Now I want to find like a normalized vector that points in the direction of the, of the cursor. That's all. And that's simple. This is... I just divide by the distance, and it gets normalized. 
If you see an error or something, you you warn me, please. Okay. Okay. Now I will calculate the, the factor of the of the force. Yeah, we, we can think on forces or, or the transformation. Factor and let's start with something like this. Zero. That's zero. Divided by the distance. Why? Because more the close the point is, more uh, more stronger will be the the transformation. So if this number grows too much, if the distance is big, the point won't be really very much transformed. Okay, and the opposite is valid. Actually, if the if the no if the distance is zero, the points will go to Narnia or yes infinite factor, right? So now I return the new point, which is the transformation. First time in my life I do that. Which is basically moving or uh, subtracting this this vector, okay? So it will move actually in the in the opposite direction the, the, of of the mouse. That's why I'm su subtracting. If the point is here and here is the mouse, it will move in this direction, opposite, right? And more the the mouse is close, more more bigger will be like the jump, okay? More longer. Let's see what happened now. I have my fish. I, uh, I will say here, this is the place where I say what, what's the, fun the, the formation function I am using. Let's see if this thing works. Okay, kind of works, it's bizarre, it's, it has a kind of problem, which is, you see, the, 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 a lot of points are going to Narnia, actually. Right? So one way to balance this is adding some number here, for instance, zero. Okay, and actually, I can like increase the strength of the transformation, but guaranteeing that this number here below never it, it never goes to zero. Okay, so perhaps that will soften a little bit. The transformation. Let's see. And now it works. Okay? Please. Okay. Now let's let's change this horrible cat. Uh, actually I I hate cats. <laughs> let's let's just not draw it. Okay? Let's return to the to the grid again. Oh, what's this? It's the cat's green. Yeah. I forgot to just totally comment this. OK. OK, now the grid. And uh, let's go to another different transformation. OK? Let's create it. Spiral. Let's place this space on a spiral. This is like bending the space. So it's more, somehow it's more, uh, more aggressive transformation. So same structure here. This one is, is a polar transformation, or, or that's the way I will approach the problem. So I'm gonna think in radius and, and angle. And it's, it works like this. So first, the, general structure. Excuse me? <laughs> Let me see if I can do this. Option. No. I forgot. Oh, it is. Control option? No. No. 
if someone want, wants to come here and help me with the controls. Command plus. No, but mm -mm. Aptana. No, I, I was trying to use the, the screen zoom. It's a combination of keys, but I. It's this one. Ah, uh, only control. Perfect. Thank you. Better? Like this? Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, radius and angle, and then the result is, is a point transformed in a polar way. So. Okay. This is this is the general structure of the function. So, how how the spider works? Okay. First of all, the radius change if the vertical position position of the point changes. So vertical position. I will add one because points uh, coordinates go from minus one to one. So that way it goes from zero to two. Now I'm, that way is normalized from zero to one. Okay, uh, and then the thing about the spiral is that that when I when I move horizontally in my in my rectangular space, it moves and the angle changes, but also the radius it gets bigger, bigger, bigger. So the radius it is also dependent of the horizontal position, and that's the the, the trick of the of the spiral. The same thing I normalize, and actually, when it from zero from minus one to one, this movement should create an entire cycle in the spiral. So it basically grows the same way that the vertical uh, axis uh, grows. So it's the same quantity. Uh, but now. I am adding two quantities that go from zero to one, and I will normalize this as well, okay? So now this radius goes from zero to one, okay? Uh, now the angle, the angle is actually simpler because it's totally dependent on the, on the horizontal position. First, I normalize it, and the idea is that it will go from zero to two p. Right? And it makes a, a turn when it goes, when this quantity here, normalized, goes from zero to one. It's so that should work. Right? Do you see some error here or something? It will work, right? Ha <laughs> It still work. Not updated yet. Ah, I have to change here. Now I have to say that the new transformation is a spiral. Right? Okay. It worked. Okay, let's let's put something different here. I have like polygons of country, so it will be a map, right? Uh, I don't know if this geographic projection has a name. <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna send that to Jason Davis to see what <laughs> what have to say. Okay. And the final thing I wanted to to comment, and I think we'll have like three minutes for conversation, is that all these transformative functions uh, form something, can be used as vectors as well. We are, we are used to, to, to think of vector as, as, a, as arrays of numbers, or points, or positions, or other kind of objects, but functions can be also treated as objects. So you can, for instance, uh, make an addition of two functions. How it works, it's very simple, it's like, the addition of two functions 
works like that. It creates a new function, right? And this new function, for each value, what I do is just to add the result of the value on these two functions, right? It's, it's kind of simple. It's just go one level down to the functions. And I can also scale functions. I can multiply by a value some functions, okay? And the, the space of functions actually is, is, is a vector space, which is something very powerful because, for instance, I can, I can interpolate functions, okay? So I can transform this space in something in the middle of two transformative functions. That's something I'm gonna do. Before that, the, there is another possible and really interesting uh, operator with functions, which will be the equivalent to the multiplication of functions. Actually, it's to compound functions, right? Let me do that. If I want to compound, for instance, I have a, a function called Mercator already created. So Mercator alone. Is, is obviously this, this kind of, of well-known map. This is Mercator that actually it only transforms the vertical axis. The horizontal axis is kept, it's kept the same. And now I want to combine spiral with Mercator. This is dangerous. <laughs> spiral Mercator. So, it's, it basically takes a point. Oh, Aptana is so slow sometimes. And it first calculates the transformation using the spiral, and then with the result, the transformation using the, the Mercator. Can you imagine the result? Try to imagine. First, I spiralize the, the point. Second, I mercatorize the point or something like that. Try to imagine the result. First spiral, second mercator, no. I have to, oh, I have to say that, that I am using a new But it is, by the way. I lost it. I, I put it in the wrong class. Okay, no worries. Which one? No. And I will put it here, but that shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Okay, so first the, sp the spider was drowned and secondly the mercator was applied. Now try to think in the inverse because this is obviously not commutative. <laughs> Why? So try to think in the, in the inverse a combination, Mercator spiral. It's the opposite. What you will get is a Mercator inside the spiral, right? So the overall shape of the Spiral will we preserve it, and then inside you have the Mercator. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is you can you can really create a universe of, of possibilities. Let me just show the last transformation, which is Mercator to spiral. It, it will be like a, a a linear combination. Okay, for that purpose I will use. The mouse position, horizontal position, I divide by the width of the of the window, so I have a, a, a value between zero and one, normalized. And then I use this to create 
this transition so it will be I apply Mercator to the point okay if T is zero Mercator or the, or the value the weight for Mercator should be one because it's called Mercator to spiral okay so the resulting point I will factorize by one minus t. So this is a value that goes from one to zero. And then to the resulting point, I will add the spiral applied to the point factor t. So t plus one minus t is always one. So I am balancing the weights. It's a linear combination, a normalized linear combination. That depends of the position of the cursor, right? Let's see if that works. Okay. From a spiral to Mercator. And thank you. And that I don't believe has a name as 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 transformation. Okay, so I think I will send a tweet to Jason Davis. <laughs> I already prepared an image, so I wanted to tweet him some show off. <laughs> okay, and that's all. Thank you very much. Not sure if time for a question, perhaps we have, one? We have time, yeah, for a okay. couple. Okay, fantastic. Basically, very experimental, but this is the 30% of my of my daytime of, of work, and I try always to use to capture all these all these ideas and all these techniques and, and use them in in actual projects for clients. Yes, and it works. Of course, that get very distilled some somehow, and at the end you you use only partial versions of, of some more drastic or radical ideas. But in some cases, you use the entire, the entire concept, okay? If my creative energy goes towards inventing pattern. It seems like a lot of your creative, uh, your creative energy goes towards inventing interesting patterns that people don't know about. Yes, yes. One of the one of the of the Pinterest boards I will share. It's is one I am I am curating called uh, patterns patterns everywhere. So. Uh, Yes, it's, it's, it's about patterns, and, and, and part of also of the books I read uh, are about uh, pattern recognition, and definitely it's part of, it's part of, the, of what the, any information visualization developer and designer should, should be uh, concerned, because uh, what we are trying to do is to, to attach meaning to, to pattern recognition processes. So absolutely, yes, I am very interested by that topic. Thank you so Thank much. You.